welcome back to my animal education series. Sam here at Wonders of Wildlife with Mike. So today we're talking about jellyfish, and obviously there's no jellyfish here. And I know absolutely nothing about jellyfish. So what kind of jellyfish do you have here? Sure. Well, here at Wonders of Wildlife, we have four different types of jellyfish on display. We have moon jellies, we have uh, blue blubber jellies, we have Pacific or West Coast sea nettles, and we also have Australian spotted jellies. So let's start off with the anatomy of a jellyfish. Because you guys kind of see like a little like half circle on top and then just like tentacles. Sure, so. sure. So um, your typical jellyfish, you've got the, the main body or the, the bell, the medusa, at the top, which is the head. And then surrounding that, you will have a series of tentacles. Some jellies have very obvious um, oral arms that will come off the center of the body. And they, uh, when they go to eat, they actually have an opening up inside the bell, which acts as their, their mouth, the opening of the digestive system. So is that how they uh, eat? Like they kind of use a mouth? Sure. So um, you've probably, uh, maybe you've experienced yourself being stung by a jellyfish. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's how they capture their prey. They have a series of specialized cells in their uh, tentacles and little arms called nematocysts. And you can kind of think of a nematocyst like a, um, a compressed coil with a bark. And when the tentacle is brushed by a prey item or uh, by a predator, those nematocysts um, erupt or open up. They have an operculum that covers the, the opening. The operculum can open and this coiled um, barb essentially can fire out, penetrate the prey, and it releases uh, a toxin that to some degrees are more or less uh, obvious depending on the species. Uh, some jellyfish hurt a lot more when they see you than others. But this acts to immobilize prey and they use their tentacles and their arms to slowly gather food up into the center of that bell or that medusoid head and uh, begin the process of digestion. So what it does like, so you can, you can see it through the bell of a jellyfish. So you, can you over time see it, like, see it kind of slowly like dissolve? Um, you probably right. wouldn't so much see it slowly dissolve, but one of the interesting things, so when we feed our moon jellies, we uh, feed them a combination of live rotifers, freshly hatched brine shrimp, and um, they're, the brine are bright orange, and as they collect those tiny food items and bring them into their bell to digest, they have a series of uh, kind of circular, um, you know, it kind of looks like a four-leaf clover, actually, that uh, is their part of their digestive tract will turn orange as it fills with these brine shrimp. So you can see their, their full stomachs as they're eating. It's kind of cool because like, you see the jellyfish and you kind of wonder, like, how does that eat? Sure. Another interesting uh, fact about one of our jellies, the Australian spotted, are that they have a mutualistic relationship with a, a type of algae called a zoosynthelia. And what they do is these zoosynthelia live inside the tissues of the jelly and uh, use the light. We provide uh, a series of different types of light, UV light, to allow the zoosynthelia to go through the process of photosynthesis. And the waste that they give off, oxygen and different types of sugars and amino acids, the jelly are actually able to use that as additional nutrition food sources um, inside their bodies. And so it gives wow. the algae a safe place to live and it gives the jellies some additional nutrition. That's really cool and how that kind of works. Yeah. You don't think about the jellyfish having like a kind of symbiotic relationship at all. Absolutely. It's the same type of algae that you find in a host of different coral tissues. The zoosynthelis uh, also uh, live in those different animals as well. So, hey, what is the organ structure of a jellyfish? Because again, it doesn't look like you can see any organs. Well, it really is basically that, that bell we talked about yeah. um, being the main body with the tentacles and the little arms. Um, a very rudimentary digestive system inside the bell. Uh, an interesting thing about jellies is they don't see the way we do, but they do have the ability to sense light and dark. They have a, uh, some modified structures that are kind of, you can call them eye spots, and they're able to detect light and dark, and it helps them uh, orient in the water. They also have some, uh, a really cool feature where they have a, like a vesicle or a type of small pocket in different places on their bell that have mineral salts or you think on like small stones inside that as the bell moves it helps them orient to the surface and the bottom of the ocean 
because those small stones that are moving around help tell the jelly whether it's facing up, down. That's super cool. Got all these different adaptations that just help us kind of thing float in the water. Absolutely. So, what are these jellyfish eating? So out in the wild, they'll eat uh, any number of different small um, crustaceans or planktonic animals, uh, small fish, uh, sometimes other jellyfish. And so they have a, um, a fairly wide range of opportunistic feeding, uh, as long as it's a small enough item for them to catch and then bring into their, into their uh, body to digest. And what kind of animals would try to eat a jellyfish? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so in the wild, a lot of turtles, a lot of sea turtles eat jellyfish. Um, you also have uh, the uh, sunfish, or the, it's called the mola mola. They eat a lot of jellyfish out in the wild. Um, and there's some birds that may also prey on them occasionally. Um, but people eat a lot of jellyfish. Really? Um, the, a lot of different uh, countries and different cultures will catch jellyfish and sometimes dry them out with like potato chips. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so how does a jellyfish reproduce? It's a very good question. So uh, jellyfish tend to be broadcast spawners, just meaning that they release sperm and egg into the water. Um, once an egg is fertilized over a series of days, it will become what's called a planula. It's a free swimming uh, portion of its life. Um, that planula will find a hard surface to attach to and from there grow into a polyp stage. And you can kind of think of it, it almost looks like a flower. There's a stalk with, a, with an open bud polyp on the end. As that matures, uh, many species will take on a really cool stacked plate look where it'll, it'll almost look like a stack of plates or a stack of pancakes with the um, portion of the polyp on the very top being the most mature. And at, when it's ready, it will actually bud off and become a free swimming medusa. And that process is called strobilation. Um, once it's a free swimming medusa, it'll continue to grow and it'll start hunting and continue to grow into back to a full uh, adult size animal. That's super interesting because yeah. it just kind of kind of the plants, you know, is on to a hard surface. You said so it goes off and is its own animal. Yep. It's so it'll go from that not free, free swimming like planula to a seeded um, life life stage called where it'll become a polyp, and then grow through that series of strobilation, that process of strobilation, yeah. into a free swimming medusa. That's super cool. Yeah, very cool. Mind. Yeah. So you were telling me beforehand that you guys breed your own jellyfish here. Mm -hmm. So which ones do you breed? So our moon jellies and our Australian spotted jellies, we've had the most success in culturing. And um, we'll have various life stages of that in some of our uh, culture tanks. Um, one of the reasons we really work, uh, put a lot of effort into culturing the moon jellies not only do they make a great exhibit animal, but they're also a very important food source for many of the other jellies, uh, in particular the, the sea nettles. Um, we'll actually feed them um, chopped up moon jelly. So it's a, it's a great display animal, but it's also a very important natural food item for the animal as well. It's probably helping kind of make it cheaper to feed the other ones, because I can't imagine shipping jellyfish. Right. So the middle of Missouri is cheap. Right, it makes it just a more natural food item. And like I said, we also feed out the uh, live rotifers and uh, freshly hatched brine shrimp that we culture in-house ourselves as well. So what is one of your favorite things about jellyfish? Uh, you know, really that, that process of their reproduction, yeah. um, how unique it seems to go from the free swimming stage to the planted polyp stage, um, and getting to see that stacked plate um, uh, look as it, as it matures and those top, those top medusas budding off, it's just an incredibly fascinating uh, yeah, process. Sure. And then that coupled with that, um, that mutualistic relationship with the zoosynthelli is another thing that I find incredibly interesting. Um, another thing that is really cool though, is that when uh, jellies are uh, in an area where there's not an abundance of food, they can actually shrink in size so that their nutritional demands are less, oh. so that they can survive longer. And then when they come into areas with abundant food, they'll eat and grow back to a full size. They're so remarkable animal. That's crazy. Yeah. So do jellyfish prefer like warm or cold water or can you find them in both? So you'll find different species all over the world. Um, you've got the, uh, the uh, blue, bu blue blubbers we have off the coast of Japan. Um, you've got the uh, Pacific sea nettles that would be in colder water, water up through Northern California and into Oregon. Um, moon jellies are found all over the place. 
And uh, so they have just a multitude of environments and uh, different uh, temperature ranges they can live in with a huge range of species. So they're pretty a, a worldwide type animal. Well, thank you so much for telling us about jellyfish. Absolutely. As I mentioned before, I know absolutely nothing about jellyfish, so I've been very enlightened by this episode. Great. This is super easy for me because all my questions were genuine. Because I didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Well, I so, know. thank you again. And thank you guys for watching this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shuri. And as always, I'll see you next week.